Welcome to Prophros Bronze Blooded. As far as our opening hand goes, yeah, we'll keep on this one. I like it. We've got uh, three lands. We've got Pandemonium, which is always a lot of fun in this deck. And we also have a uh, Gauntlet of Might, which is uh, works out really well with these mountains. So um, we'll see if our opponent wants to, There they go. They are going to keep on this seven. And I guess, yeah, we're just going to lead off with Desert. That way it's going to come into play tapped and we can cover the commander. So let's go and play this one and then anything else. Pass it over to our opponent. We're playing Prophros Bronze Blooded. Uh, Jeb Bush right there. Somebody left a comment saying that's Jeb Bush, and that's that's all I see now. And so anyway, this is the Jeb Bush deck, so I hope you're excited. Uh, let's have Mountain come down, and also if you hear some crunching, I'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, we're uh, playing Pophros, Indestructible, and as long as Devotion 5 turns into a creature, then other creatures you control have haste. Then for a three-man activation, you may put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, and that's going to be Sylvan Scrying. Yeah, let's go for a Thrill of Possibility. And I think Flame Sweep may work out, but I think at this point, if we're going to get rid of Omnath, it's almost going to be Hour of Devastation. So let's just go and get rid of Flame Sweep. I think that'll be okay. All right, there we go. Drawn to some pretty good stuff. Um, we'll let them resolve this uh, Sylvan Scrying and then go from there. But yeah, three mana activation. Uh, put a creature card or a um, red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Sacrifice at the beginning of the next in step. So, uh, it's, ooh, man, this is... These are some beautiful draws. Uh, let's go for Mountain, and that's going to be three. Nothing else that we can do. We're going to go and pass the turn over there. Playing gets Omnath, Locus of Mana. Um, you don't lose unspent green mana as steps and phases end. Omnath gets plus one, plus one for each unspent green mana that you have. And I have my production assistant with me today, uh, Mr. Sturgill, uh, who is my dog. So he is uh, chewing on a little treat right now. So if you hear some crunching, that's, that is him. So... Um, let's go Buried Ruin. Um, if we end up going Gauntlet of Might, um, that's going to put us into six mana, which really opens up our entire hand. Turns us on to Hour of um, Devastation, so I think we're going to go Gauntlet of Might. So let's get this down, and then uh, anything else, pass it back over there. So um, we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout-out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, that will apply my affiliate link and allow you to get some cards and help support the channel at the same time. So if you'd like to support the channel, um, that is the number one way to do it um, right now. Also, also, let's give a quick shout out to MTGO Traders if you want to play online. Um, I don't know when Commander 20 is releasing, but it should be releasing sometime soon. I know it's in the actual core base, so when it does, be sure to hit up MTGO Traders. And quick shout out to inkgaming.com slash jolt. That's going to allow you to get a play mat, up your webcam games. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So there we go. If you're keeping score at home, it is officially free time. All right, so we're going to hit Rex Sage on that Gauntlet of Might. It was definitely worth going it, uh, going for that play. So hopefully we rip into a land. Um, if we don't, we can always end up going for Duretti. Okay, so we end up with Thran Dynamo. Yeah, I guess at this point, I think we just go for Thran Dynamo. Let's go one, two, three, four. And um, we'll get that down. That still gives us three, but there's nothing else that we can do. And then we're simply just going to go and pass the turn over there. But yes, as far as Prophros goes, this is one of my favorite commander decks recently to play. I love it. Um, one of my first casual decks was a uh, Pandemonium deck with all the uh, cloud, po uh, cloud Post lands. And uh, whew, I played a lot of that. And so whenever they release the new Prophros, which is basically just a sneak attack commander, um, it puts us in just a beautiful board state. You think about it, well, let's say we have Pandemonium down. Uh, we have Mirror March entering the battlefield, dropping in a creature. Um, that is some very good magic right there. So we'll see what our opponent ends up having. They've got a, a pretty good board state. If we can get this Hour of Devastation to go, um, this is going to be absolutely wonderful for, for us. Let's so going to get rid of Guy's Cradle and just really kind of devastate their board state. So this is going to be perfect. So let's go for Hour of Devastation. This can be one, two. Yeah, there's no other, really other sequencing. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Got that cleared out. And then uh, anything else, we're going to pass it back over there. So they can end up going for Omnath. It's going to send Omnath back to the uh, five total mana. And so if they don't have a creature to get down or a land drop, at least it's going to buy us a little bit of an extra turn to kind of hit the reset button. Um, we'll see if we want to end up going for Duretti. At this point right now, we've got Pandemonium and Blightsteel Colossus. That's one of the fun things about this deck is you can just kind of end up with these like, oops, I can win sometimes. So... Um, we're definitely going to be trying to go for Pandemonium because once we get down Pandemonium, we get down Prophoros, we drop in Blightsteel Colossus. Um, that damage dealt from Pandemonium is going to be infect damage uh, to our opponent. So that's going to allow us to one-hit KO um, our opponent, which is always a lot of fun. So <laughs> let's go for Mountain. Yeah, and at this point, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 7, 8. We have 8 total mana. 
Yeah, I still think the best bet because that puts us in next turn for Blight, Still Colossus, and going for Pandemonium and an activation. So let's go for Proferos. And that's one of the good things about Proferos is uh, he is indestructible. So a Reclamation Sage is not going to be able to do anything about that. Now, if we wanted to, we could drop in... And actually, we may end up doing that, just dropping in a quick uh, Worm Coil Engine in our opponent's instep, because um, that's going to allow to not sacrifice and also have haste. That way, we can swing in with it. So, um, anything else, we will pass the turn. So, if they do decide to tap in or swing in with Omnath, at least we can drop in Worm Coil Engine. Um, that's one of the cool things about this deck, especially with Worm Coil Engine, is that you can drop it in there and you sacrifice it. Um, normally, sacrificing creatures kind of a downside, but you still end up with a couple tokens on the battlefield for your trembles. And, um, you know, it's just fun to be able to use Profros in a manner that is, you know, we're going to try to close the game out with Blight Steel Colossus, but sometimes you can just drop in a value piece like that and go for a little bit of a chump block. So, all right, Pope's going to go for Cultivate. But they have Gurk Wildspeaker. Um, I don't think they've gone for the activation yet, so we'll see what they end up going for um, this turn. But we should... Fingers crossed, be able to close it out next turn. That should be pretty cool. But you can also see where even if we didn't have Blight Steel Colossus with that Infect Damage and Pandemonium, um, let's say we get Mirror March down and then we end up dropping in a Worm Coil Engine and those Mirror March tokens go our way. I'm almost tempted to kind of go for that anyway, so... Uh, we'll see what our opponent, because when you're playing against Omnath, sometimes that mana can generate very quickly, and that can lead to a very quick commander damage win, so um, if we end up doing that, we may end up losing somehow, so... We'll kind of see, see what we draw into, but at least we do have the W on our side of the battlefield. All right, so it's going to be four coming across. Um, it's going to put us down to 17. That will be 11 total commander damage. And then let's see what we rip into. And that is going to be Gamble. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're still sitting at eight mana. Yeah, I think we just end up going for the Pandemonium line of play. That's going to be pretty good. So it's going to be one, two, three. And oh, always feels good to go for this. And then let's go for a uh, Profros activation. Let's drop in Blight Steel. Let's deal that damage up top to our opponent. There we go. That's going to be 11 Infect. Yes, we definitely want to use that ability. And then we close the game out. There we go. 11 Infect damage. So, I'm not the craziest win, but uh, being able to have just drop for a three-minute activation, I win the game, is one of the cool things in here. So, but a little bit of a shorter video, so I'm going to jump back in there to see if we can't find something. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hey. Like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Proferos Bronze Blooded. As far as our opening hand goes, a little bit of a risky key, but um, hey, we're playing Proferos uh, Sneak Attack. So I'm um, going to gamble on Ancient Tomb and uh, keep our fingers crossed that this pays off. So, but anyway, welcome to some Proferos. Hope you're excited. We've got Jeb Bush today. Jeb Bush is going to be throwing Duplicate at Atraxa over there uh, with an activated ability. And. Uh, <laughs> We'll go from there. So uh, let's go lead off with uh, Mountain. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're going to lead off with Mountain. Uh, we're going to go for Gamble. Keep our fingers crossed for this Ancient Tomb that it doesn't just wreck. You know, if it hits Ancient Tomb, okay, we swap a Mountain for that. I will 100% take that. So um, anything else, let's pass it back over there. We're playing Prophoros, Bronze Blooded, Indestructible Devotion 5 turns into a creature. Um, other creatures you control have Haste. And then for a 3-mana activation, you may put a Red Creature card or an Artifact Creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next instep. Playing against a Trax, a Praetor's Voice, um, Flying Vigilance, Dead Touch, and Life Link, then at the beginning of your instep. If you're keeping score after those keywords, proliferate. So there you go. That's the big payoff. Um, we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors. TCG Player, if you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, that will apply my affiliate link and allow you to get some cards and help support the channel at the same time. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, this is the number one way to do it. So, um, And it's super easy. All you got to do is click on the link, um, the coupon link, or actually just click on the deck link um, down below and that will apply it. So there we go. Works out for both of us. Little man in my mana pool. I appreciate it. All right, so let's go ahead and lead off with... Yeah, I guess at this point, we're just going to lead off with Mountain. And then uh, anything else, let's go and pass it back over to our opponents. Let's give a quick shout-out to MTGO Traders. If you want to play online um, during the uh, the lockdown that we have right now, it's one of the best ways to play Commander Online and stay in touch. So be sure to check out MTGO Traders. Also, let's give a quick shout-out to InkGaming.com. If you go to InkGaming.com slash Jolt, um, that will apply my affiliate link. So that way, if you want to get yourself a new play map for your webcam series, whatever that may be, um, they have a ton of wonderful options over there. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to support cool content like this, there's a link down in the description below. Um, get your name in the credits. And uh, I think, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure if you're keeping score at home, it is officially free time. So let's have some fun. All right, so let's lead off with uh, Ancient. Oh, man, this is... Okay, so this is this is getting pretty good. We've got Leveler. We've got Doretti. I'm really digging this. So let's lead off with Ancient Tomb. 
And I think we just end up going to ready. That's going to be one, two, three, four. And it's going to allow us to start filtering. And um, what we can do is that love leveler. So we're going to try to hold on to leveler if we can and try to go for a level, leveler win because that is just what this deck is about. Let's go for the uh, plus two. Um, discard up to two cards. And I think at this point, we'll just get rid of Eater of Days. <sighs> Because we've got Duplicate on a track, so that is something that we definitely need to keep in our hand. And I really like Mirror Works. Yeah, let's, I always love Leveler, but we really need to make the land drop next turn. And I'm afraid if we don't keep Duplicate for a track, so that's just going to be a Commander Damage win for our opponent. So as much as I hate it, let's go for Leveler. We can always bring it back out of the graveyard. And there we go, get another land and a card draw sort. So I'll certainly take that. So um, anything else, let's pass it back over to our opponent. So we did cover both Commanders. It is uh, free time. Cover the ads. Let's talk about Profros. What are we doing with Profros? Um, this is one of my favorite Commander decks recently. I love Love it. Um, I know I explained it in the other video, but I don't know how long these videos go. So if you hear a double story, hey, <laughs> just mark your scorecard. Uh, but one of the first decks I ever played in uh, Magic Online in the casual room is just basically kitchen table magic was a um, cloud post pandemonium deck. And that involved dropping in stuff like Eater of Days, Leveler. And if you don't know what pandemonium does, it says when a creature enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. And that applies to your opponent's board state too. And that's what makes the card so much fun is you have to time it to where you get pandemonium down and you can go for something like Leveler and Eater of Days all in the same turn. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Things are getting serious over there. All right. So a duplicant, it's just going to be target creature. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. We're getting very close to a Planeswalker Ultimate on our opponent's side of the battlefield, so we'll see what we can do. We may, if we're going to try to kind of grind this out, we may end up having to go for Mirror Works next turn, just to kind of set up some sort of crazy Enter the Battlefield effect. Uh, because Doubling Season is, uh, yeah, that's kind of, uh, uh -uh. doesn't sound too much fun. So let's go and lead, actually, let's do this. So let's go for Duretti. We're going to discard up to two cards, and definitely Mind's Eye is something nice to have, but at this point with Doubling Season, um, the heat in the kitchen is going. And at this point, I think we'll just discard Tormenting Voice, too. So, all right, so we draw into Mountain and Anger of the Gods, which actually doesn't do anything against Dryad. So, um, yeah, we still want to end up going for Mirror Works. So let's get Mirror Works down. That's going to be Mountain. Um, let's go Mirror Works. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And we might. We might. It depends if Duretti sticks around on the battlefield. Um, if we sacrifice a permanent, we might be able to kind of set up Profros to give all of our creatures haste, and then maybe... Go for a mirror works activation. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So anything else, we'll pass it back over to our opponent. So, but yeah, that was a, kind of the the deck in a nutshell. Was just getting down pandemonium, being able to win the game with leveler. Because um, when I first got into Magic, the concept of you know leveler exiling your library, like it didn't matter because you had that ten damage on the stack, or maybe you had uh, you're casting leveler into an open mirror work, so that way you can make a couple copies of it. And so um, that was always one of my favorite decks to play. So whenever they release Profros, I'm like, oh. It's time to convert this uh, casual deck into a commander deck. And that's one of the fun things about, um, there we go. So we get Astral Cornucopia. Yeah, that's fine. If that's all that they're going for. They do have Karn. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so we're actually getting down pretty close to a Karn activation for next turn. So that's going to be Exile Target Permanent for a minus three or the plus four. We, we'll see what they end up going for. But... Yeah, because even if we go duplicate, we're going to have to pay the iron price for duplicate to get rid of it. E. Uh, we shall see what's going to happen. But yeah, because that's going to be card entering. It's going to enter with 6. That's going to be 12. Luckily, it doesn't go for the minus 14 right away with doubling season and Karn. But uh, we'll see what they're going for. It looks like they're tapping out for a track zone. But yeah, you know, if you've never played a sneak attack deck like this, it's a lot of fun because, um, you know... One of the things I really enjoy doing is, you know, this is mono red. You think hasty stuff, you think, you know, damage. And so it's still fun to kind of take that core concept of mono red. Um, a Johnny put a plus one counter. Sure, that'll work. Um, it's just fun to kind of have this. You're playing mono red and you still have those core values of kind of this random damage or whatever. But it's just fun to kind of do it in this controlled setting uh, with stuff like Mirror Works, Profros, Pandemonium. Um, it just makes for a really fun play style. All right, so we've got uh, Dryad swinging in. That's going to knock Duretti down. His uh, 
mobility vehicles definitely looking pretty rough right now probably sitting at one loyalty um, we'll see what we draw into and we'll see if we can do but it's probably not looking good and uh, with Karn coming down next turn it kind of depends on how they decide to take the Karn activation I think that's going to be it so um let's get so that's going to be one two three four five yeah at this point I think we still just end up going for Dreddy activation first just to kind of see what we go for so um let's get rid of anger of the gods I mean duplicate does help us out with a Traxa but is that really what we're wanting to do right now, especially with all these Planeswalker super friend stuff on the battlefield? I almost just wonder if we could just maybe go for a value play with Wormcoil Engine and Mirror Work. Yeah, I think that's going to be a little bit better. Or actually, if we want to, since we do have the land drop to make, this going to be Homeward Path. Let's just do this. Let's just go and discard a desert. And then, oh, there we draw into a relic and we hit another mountain. So well, let's go for Homeward Path. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and I guess if we end up going, that's going to put us at four, so we actually can't have Relic come down. I think at this point, if we're going to try to grind this one out, we just end up going for Profro, so it's going to be one, two, three, because that's going to force Dryad swinging at Dreddy, and it kind of keeps us open as far as, you know, maybe what they decide to target with uh, Karn, you know. Maybe they decide to target our hand or something if they're going to go for that ultimate, and then we might be able to squeeze in some... Um, random value plays by dropping a lot of creatures in or something. I don't know. We'll see. Anything else? Let's go and pass it back over there. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, Karn was the reveal. And so that should be the last card that they do have in their hand. So we'll see if all Karn's going to come down out of his lazy boy and start punching the board state. Uh, but yeah, you know, like I was saying, it's just fun to take these, you know, because like red and then red, white are, you know, they're my least favorite colors in Magic. And so um, to get me to want to play a mono red deck, it needs to kind of have this special... I don't know, like this kind of flavor to it. And so I really enjoy how this handles. So um, if you've been thinking about doing it, a red is outside of your comfort zone. Hey, check it out. It's a lot of fun to play a deck like this. So uh, being able to drop those creatures in. All right, so we got Dryad that's going to knock Dreddy out of the game. Let's see what else they're going to have for us for the turn. And okay, so that is going to be Karn entering the battlefield with 12 loyalty counters. Let's see what they end up going for. The best, yeah, I was about to say, the best play is going to be going for Profros because um, that stops any sort of funny business, Lebowski. Um, that also, you know, it kind of puts us in a spot to where if they don't do that, we can also maybe kind of haste the game out. So, all right, let's see what we got. This could be another land drop. So if we end up going Mountain, that's going to be 1, 2, 3 with a Relic, and that puts us at 5. I mean, I think they start going for the minus, the plus four, to be honest. So if we're trying to, I mean, we're looking at duplicate exiling Dryad, which could be nice. We don't have, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're not going to have just enough to go for a uh, Mirror Works activation. So yeah, since there's only one creature on the board state, let's just go and go for it. This might kind of change up the way they end up going for these Karn activations. At this point, this game's not looking that good as far as us winning, but if we can just delay it just a little bit and somehow buy us some time and, I don't know, set up some sort of weird mirror works, we'll see. So, all right, so we're not going to be able to pay for mirror works on this. We're going to click no, but you can see how good mirror works would be in a cloud post deck, you know, being able to just copy any artifact for two mana. Um, yes, definitely want to use that ability. Um, that's going to be duplicate, and then anything else, we will pass the turn over to our opponent. So, um, looking at Relic next turn, we have the extra land drop. Um, really, to kind of get this thing going, what we're looking for is going to be something like Warstorm Surge, Pandemonium, something that's going to allow us to deal Enter the Battlefield damage if we want to have a chance, because actually, if we can deal with Karn, um, they're sitting at one card in the hand, and that kind of puts them on a Traxa Beat Stick. So, um, there's a very tiny out in this uh, in this particular game. Just kind of depends on how they decide to take Karn. If they end up going minus three on Duplicant, that kind of gets that loyalty down, which really works out. There we go. Yeah, and they're going to start exiling stuff out of our hand. Um, we can make that work. Now, at this point, we're actually just going to exile Relic because we definitely want to make the land drop, and that keeps us open on just dropping in Worm Coil because that will finally be just enough for us to go for a Mirror Works activation. And, um, yeah, we'll see. Because once we get down Worm Coil Engine... Yeah, because they're sitting at a 13. They still end up having to go for the plus four. So we might be able to kind of sneak something out um, with a double copy of Worm Coil Engine. So we'll, we'll see what's going to happen. Um, luckily, with Worm Coil being a 6-6 six, six and Death Touch, that does kind of get the uh, make a tracks of being a 4-4 four, four, not so scary. So we can make that work. Let's we'll see what we draw into, though. And they're going to be able to proliferate with Karn. So actually, if we don't... Yeah, I totally forgot about the proliferate. So this is looking pretty gnarly right now. So let's see what we draw. I'm not sure what we can draw into um, that's going to help us out because they're just going to immediately be able to proliferate, um, restart the game. Let's go mountain. 
creatures don't have haste. Do we just end up going for Pirate's Pill? I mean, I just don't know what we could hit off of Pirate's Pillage that would allow us to get just enough mana to close it out. I mean, we do... We've got Chaos Warp. I think that's like literally our only out right now. So so let's do this. So let's end up going for Pirate's Pill. It's just going to be one, two, three. See if we can hit that Chaos Warp. We're going to discard Warm Coil Engine because it does us no good right now. Uh, let's go, let's go. Oh, okay, so Rupture without flying in each player. Okay, so that's not going to get in on this one. So we're staring down a car in Ultimate. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to go and scoop this one up. Good game to our opponent. We, we tried to grind this one out, but unfortunately with that car in Ultimate, we're just going to be even... Going downhill, and then if they draw into another Planeswalker with Doubling Season, they're going to be able to grab it on this one. So good game to our opponent. We did kind of, you know, turn the heat up in their kitchen just a little bit, and we got to get down to Mirror Works. Pretend how fun it would have been to go for Leveler, but um, that's just kind of how the way Magic goes sometimes. So, anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.